Nah, what happened? Am I live? I don't even know. Oh, I think I am. Hello and welcome to Living Abroad. My name is Alex. And if this is your first time to the channel, I want to say welcome. Today we're going to talk about uh, dual pricing. Uh, before we get started, uh, <laughs> Palma's not here and I feel like a loser here on Saturday night at 9.30 p.m. by myself. If you're watching this after the live stream, the quality is going to reduce a little bit. The lighting is not really good because it's nighttime. Uh, so yeah, we'll get started and we'll talk about some dual pricing. I've noticed like six of you guys left already because Palm's not here next to me. So <laughs> if you guys are here to see her energy, her lively manner, she's not going to be here today. She's out with her friend in Oslo trying to check out the whale sharks, stuff like that. So let's get into today um, today's video. Let me know if you guys can hear me and see me. That'll mean a lot to me. And once I have confirmation, I'll go ahead and get started on this live stream. And as usual, we'll have some discussions. Uh, you guys can write your comments in the comment section. And I'll answer all the questions you guys have. So first of all, let me know if you can hear me and see me, and we'll get right into it. Um, this happened to me about uh, two weeks ago, three little things. I didn't want to make a video about it because it's not a big deal, but it's something that should be talked about. And also, I'm trying to see if this is a normal thing that happened in the Philippines, or am I like overthinking it? And um, Because, you know, dual pricing is a very common thing in many other countries, but this was my first time experiencing it in the Philippines. So the first thing that happened was on our trip to Malapascua, we went to the North Bus Terminal or South Bus Terminal, yeah, North Bus Terminal to try to take a local air conditioned van to go into um, wherever we had to go. And the guy told us uh, 350, so we sat down and uh, Palm asked the Filipinos that were in the car saying, hey, how much did you guys pay? And they said, oh, only 300. Now, that's just a small incident. It's not that much money. It's not a big deal. And also because we agreed to it, of course, the guy can say anything. And if we don't want to agree to it, then we don't have to. But uh, just kind of something that got us started off on the wrong foot. But um, I ended up giving the guy 600 anyways, and he didn't say anything. So that wasn't a big deal. But, you know, just left a little bit of a negative experience getting on that bus. Uh, watched him from Quebec City. Oh, <laughs> Ubeck. Where's Ubeck? Let me know. Is that in the Philippines? So that was the first little thing that happened and all the way to, on the way to like the boat, this is where the second thing happened. So we get to the pier and the boat is supposed to take us from the city that we arrived to the island of Malapascua. Now I already read online, I had some information that the boats can carry up to 10 people and it's no more than 200 per person on the boat. So basically the entire boat is valued at 2000 pesos. Now there's a big sign there. Oh, here's a, actually the second thing that happened before the boat thing. So um, when I got to the island, we had to pay the environmental fee. There were two foreigners, sorry, two locals, Filipinos ahead of us, and they paid 75 pesos each to go ahead for the environmental fee. But when it was Palm and I turned, we're both non-Filipinos, Canadian, Thailand. And then obviously uh, we ended up paying a little bit more in that's an official office, right? So we paid not by much, but we paid 124 or 120 pesos per, right? So still, regardless of the amount, it was a different price. So that kind of got me thinking. Then I saw signs as well that said, oh, if you're a foreigner, the, for a boat is this much, for this and that is that much. So kind of a kind of a new thing in the Philippines for me. So as we go through this, guys, I'll leave your comments, your, your questions, your answers. This is not in any way try to say, I got scammed for lots of money, but it's just a dual pricing thing, right? Uh, let me know your experiences, if this is a normal thing, if you've uh, been in that situation. Anyways, so that was the second thing, the environmental fee that was uh, more for foreigners that are non-Filipinos compared to the locals. Now, I don't mind paying any of that amount. I'm, I'm going to give you guys my thoughts about all this afterwards. But let's get into the third thing. So like getting back to the boat, 2000 per boat. Now, the guy said there isn't anybody else here. We have a private boat, so it's going to be 500 pesos each because there was two other people with us. I just kind of happened to be there. So we said, yeah, sure, why not? We don't know how long it's going to take to fill up the boat with 10 people. So we said, okay. So we paid the guy 500 each, capping at 2,000. And we sit in the boat expecting to go to the island. Now we're waiting and waiting. And then a guy comes and another guy comes. And like four kids come. And the guy's wife comes. So I said something. I'm like, excuse me, we paid 400 or 500 each because you said it's a private boat. So what's going on, right? He's like, oh, this is uh, this is a police officer and his kids. I'm like, okay. He's like, oh, well, this is the owner of the boat and his wife. I'm like, all right. It just kind of, we clearly, they weren't the owners or the police officer. It was an 
obvious like thing to get more money from us as well as some from those other people as well. So that's what happened. So those three things, I would love to know your thoughts. Of course, it's not a big amount. It's not a large amount. I didn't lose my life savings. But, you know, when you get into these things and you start wondering, okay, what? Because not every foreigner is rich, first of all. Second of all, if this is normal practice, then kind of like maybe just put it on the list. I don't know. I have, I have mixed feelings about it, but I just want to get it out there and get your views on these things. Because it was the first time I experienced like all three things within a day. And I thought it might be a good topic to talk about just to get the normal, um, basically, landscape of things when you do travel. Now, to be fair, there was another two Filipinos uh, that were on the boat. So they ended up paying 500 each anyways. Right? So it wasn't just non-Filipinos. I think it was more like anybody that's not from the island. And for their side of things, why not try to make more money if they can? Anyways, leave your thoughts and let me know. Um, see what happens. I'm going to start reading some of your comments and questions. So let's get back to thanking everybody for joining the stream. There's about 40 people on here right now. If you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, guys, take a quick second, hit the subscribe button. And I just did a poll on the channel. Over a thousand people answered because I wasn't sure as a foreigner if I'm allowed to use the word Pinoy. Uh, so I'm glad that it's okay. Over 93% said it's fine because just because I understand the word, like doesn't mean I have the right to use it. Right. So I just want to be sure before I put in my title. So thank you guys for participating in that. And young boy Pete's here, T-bone steak, skin tax. <laughs> yeah, um, Steve Baby Ethan says, good morning, Alex. Good morning. Uh, Steve, you're on the channel for live this time. That's great. Um, levels of madness, 75 of them local prices. It's like a senior citizen discount. Okay, cool. Got it. So that makes sense too, right? If you're local, why not have a discount? This is where you live, maybe. But then again, anyway, so... I don't know where I stand with this double pricing because many countries have it. I'm still kind of like on the fence about it. I don't know how to feel about it. It's just like, I think something that I'm not used to. So it just, I guess I have to adapt to it. Um, Nathaniel says, yes, we can hear you very well. Thank you. Um, Bogdan, perfect. Excellent. Young boy Pete, uh, does it happen in Thailand? Probably not. Actually, it does happen in Thailand. Thailand is a lot worse, I'll say, when it comes to the government officially charging you from more because you're a foreigner. So for example, when I go to the temple of Bangkok, for me it's 500 baht. So that's about 750 pesos as a foreigner. For the Thai people, it's free. So there's a huge difference there. Usually it's about five times the price at other official government, uh, national parks, etc. So you pay five times more than the locals. One, one thing I had to get used to there as well. Um, then, yeah, Daniel says, at any point did you try to haggle for a lower price? I haven't, to be honest, because um, many reasons. Because usually it hasn't been an absurd amount of money. And secondly, because I usually, for example, if I take a taxi or a motorbike somewhere, I ended up tipping the people anyways. So simply I would just not tip them. I have sometimes haggle when I know for sure a price. For example, if I order a motorcycle ride from here to the mall, I know it's usually around 35 pesos. So if the guy says 70 pesos for a bike ride, I'll say 50 something like that. But typically, I, I know people have to make a living and, and I understand the travel of things. I think when I was younger, I thought haggling was cool or like not cool, but like I want to save as much. But the more I travel, the more I realize that it makes much bigger difference to the locals uh, to earn that little bit of extra money than it is for me to save it. Um, Lavina is here. Hey, Lavina, welcome to the channel. Just on a 10 minute break. Can't think of a better way to spend it. Oh, so sweet. Guys, Lavina Walsh has been one of my first subscribers on the channel since my turkey days. So I have a you know soft spot for her when she's on the channel, when she comments. And she's the one that suggested I do like uh, buy me a coffee link when I was getting up and started. So yeah, welcome to the channel, Lavina. Uh, welcome to the live stream. Steve Baby says, um, dual pricing happens sometimes, of course. Uh, levels of madness. They saw you coming a mile away. Oh, yeah. They saw me coming all right, bro. I had a, like a freaking tourist hat, sunglasses, la di -da. You know, I don't speak a word of uh, Visaya, so <laughs> I'm sure they saw it. Um, Mark says, hey, Alex, hope you have been good. I've been great, Mark. Thank you for asking. I'm going to try to get through all these comments, guys, so just bear with me. So many people here <laughs> writing questions. Here we go. Uh, levels of man has got to learn to say no, but hell no. <laughs> okay, true. Uh, Zef is here. You got scammed. There's a price for locals and a price for foreigners. Uh, thanks for sharing your thoughts, Zef. Exploring Bangkok says, hi, Alex. Great shirt today. A random, do you travel only with carry-on or also a big suitcase? 
Oh, thank you for the shirt compliment. I'm running out of clothes. I got to do laundry. This is like my Sunday shirt, you know. <laughs> I don't go to church, but, you know. Um, I When I travel within a, domestically, I just have a carry-on. But when I go internationally, I have a suitcase because my whole life is in my suitcase. So, and it's a lot. I mean, it's not a lot. <laughs> Think about it. I've been traveling three years with just one suitcase and one carry-on. Um, Rilla said, what's going on, brother? Uh, what's up, chat gang? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the live stream. Steve Baby says, uh, I never seen it in writing. The locals pay less. Uh, yeah, I saw it in writing on big signs, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but it happened. Morning from Vancouver. Hey, Vancouver time. What time is it now? I guess I forget. You guys in the West. So it must be like 4 a.m. You're up late. Um, not 4 a.m. I don't know. I'm lost with the time. Don Murphy. Morning from Vancouver. You said that keeper. That probably is a scam. I mean, the guy that asked you for 500 each. And then continuously bored of people. Yeah, that's what I thought so too. Born Ed's Philippines tour is still developing. Unlike the talent, it's already developed. You need to bargain in the Philippines. Just look at other bloggers. They bargain. Yeah. Um, Alfred Clues. Welcome. Alfred's on the channel. Uh, Don Murphy, if you rent a place and it's online, they always ask if you're white or Filipino. So yeah, that brings us to the next scam. This is a clear scam. So I don't know what the word scam is really strong. So let's say... A dual pricing or taking advantage of me or whoever else is watching. And the thing that kind of bothers me is that Filipinos don't seem to correct anyone. So here's a, here's an example. When I wanted to rent this place or other this place, not so much. But when I was looking at other places to rent, everybody has the pictures, what's included, everything but the price. So everybody in the comment section on the Facebook uh, page for renting says how much, how much, how much, how much, how much, how much, and they're like, oh, send it PM, send PM, send PM, send PM. Personal message, check your inbox, check your inbox. Why not just post the price? And whoever can afford it, if it's in people's budget, you save time from people that are not interested. You save time from people that can't afford it. And the people are looking for apartments, obviously, will not look at your ad if it's not within their budget. So I don't understand that. So that's a clear like way of trying to take as much as they can from whoever's interested, which I don't find like acceptable. Sorry, but like no one seems to like bother mentioning it except for me. And whether you're a Filipino or a foreigner, I think that's something that should be clearly stated, the price of the unit that you're trying to rent. Not a different price for whoever from wherever they're from because, yeah, it's kind of a, that's a little bit too much in my opinion. Um, uh, levels of Madness. If it's called Street Smarts, when you're dumb, you pay through the nose. Yeah, to some level, of course, right? And there's, a, there's this fine line between being street smart and being disrespectful to the locals because unless you're 100% sure, then obviously you don't pay. Oh, here's another scam. This is number four. And here's your street smarts uh, in case um, you, yeah, anyway. So I went to Tops here in Cebu, which is like, you know, on top of the Cebu, you got a nice, beautiful view. And they took a taxi there. A taxi picked me up from my condo. They called the taxi to come pick me up. First of all, the meter was already running when he arrived. It was at 44. Usually it takes about five minutes and at least like half a kilometer till it goes up from 40. I didn't say anything. It's only four pesos. I'm like, whatever. He came to the building. Let him do what he's got to do. We're sitting in the taxi, and this guy's like, oh, uh, it's going, it's very uphill, right? I'm like, yeah, are you going to use the meter? He's like, yeah, but you pay more. I'm like, I'm not paying more. You can use the meter. He's like, uh, I'm like, are you going to use the meter or not? He's like, yeah, meter, meter. So then we get across, like, a little bit further away from the condo, and he starts making excuses. Oh, it's a really steep hill. I'm like, I get it, but that's where the meter keeps running. The car doesn't care how steep the street is. I'm like, if you're not going to go, please drop me off, and I'll just take another taxi. He's like, okay, 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 meter, meter. I'm like, okay. So because of his attitude and the whole time he pretends like he's lost. I'm like, bro, it's tops in Cebu. It's like a well-known attraction place. You're a taxi driver. You don't know the way. He's like, no. So I'm like, okay, let's use the GPS. So I'm using my GPS, even though I know for 100% he knows what I'm talking about. We go there and he's like, oh, left or right. I'm like, go left. And up there, the GPS isn't working. Anyways, all that aside, we get out and he's like, oh, 400. But the meter said 300. Like, no, it's four. I'm like, no, it's, I told Palm to get out. So Palm gets out and I give the guy 300. And he's like, oh, he gets all mad. I'm like, that's what the meter said. I asked you twice. He said, okay, here's your 300. So then I'm about to go into a restaurant. He like comes in front of the restaurant, gets out of the car, goes, sits on the ledge and starts talking in Filipino or whichever dialect to people. And I could tell he's talking shit about me to them. So I couldn't, you know, I used to try to keep my cool. So I, I walked up to him, like, what's your problem? I'm like, I explained everything to him. And then, like, here, I, I try to give him, like, 600 or something even more. But he's, like, pretend, like, it just bothered the hell out of me. Because I'm, like, don't talk shit to me in front of other people when you're the one trying to scam me. And 
I didn't basically fall for it and I didn't pay more than I have to. So there you go. That's just street smart. I was supposed to, like, I'm trying to fight somebody in public anyways, but yeah, so there's levels to it. There's, there's like a difference between getting scammed to your face and maybe like not trying to haggle for 50 pesos, which is like a dollar to me. And I know someone's trying to make a living, but that kind of situation, I don't put up with. I call people out on their BS anytime when it comes to like something like that. Um, what's next? I'm getting angry now thinking about that situation. <laughs> um, Born at the Philippines, too, I'm still developing. Offer clues from yeah, Ontario, Canada. Welcome, Alfred. Um, Steve says, might just, where is, sorry, I got to go back all the way up. Oh, my goodness. Sorry, guys, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, comments. Uh, feel free to use a super chat, super stickers. If not, just please wait a little bit while I go through everybody's comments. Um, if you are in place, da, da, da. Might have just been a bad spot where you wanted to make more money. Yeah, I think so. You probably had some nice uh, close on. I would have charged you one thousand. <laughs> I uh, if I had some no, I had no nice clothes on, man. Just a t-shirt and shorts. I don't travel fancy. I'm just not a fancy guy. So I think I obviously I'm a foreigner. So at least not a local um, keeper. I don't buy his reasoning that it's a police and boat owner <laughs> probably scammed by the guy. Wish he took pictures or videos of him. But that's the thing, though, right? It's like I can't definitively, definitively know it wasn't the police on the owner, but it's clearly not. You know, you could just tell based on the way they dressed, they weren't making eye contact. And the Filipinos that were with us, the other two, they felt the same way. Now, on the way back, obviously, I didn't let that happen to me twice. So the thing is, where with the taxi driver, it was a clear, obvious cut. Like, it wasn't a debate. The meter said one thing, that's what I'm paying you. But yeah, so that's one thing. What's next? Uh, Don Murphy, 7.40 a.m. in Vancouver. Steve says it's 7.41 Edmonton, Alberta. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Oh, Cebu. Ubek is in Cebu. I didn't know. Uh, Bobby Locke, 8.40 in Houston and hotter than Philippines. Really? I guess, yeah, heat waves are crazy in the U.S. and Europe right now. Uh, Zeph, don't worry. Even if you pay a little bit more, it's not much for us and helps them out. I understand enough of the language that they get surprised. Yeah, like that's the thing, right? So it's a very fine line between getting taken advantage of and just like helping the locals anyway. So, but I haven't mentioned anything like this on the channel, but I just want people to know it does happen. You can't just be oblivious to anything. This time might be 500 pesos. Next time might be 5,000. You really don't know. So just keep your wits about you when you're traveling anywhere, not just the Philippines. Um, what else? Corey's here. Hi, from Miami. Corey's a longtime viewer. Uh, Sunny G or Sunny, yeah, Sunny G. When are you going back to Thailand? Sunny G, I don't plan to go to back to Thailand anytime soon, but I'm considering if I should stay in the Philippines and how long will I stay in the Philippines? So we'll see. Um, Sasha Lee, you're asking if you're being scammed? No, it's not. It's just that, of course, they see you have more money than locals. But do I? That That's the definition of a scam, isn't it? <laughs> or at least being dishonest. Um, yeah, I guess we have different thoughts on that. Exploring Bangkok, how much you pay for that place? This place here, I'm paying about uh, 20,000 pesos a month. It includes electricity, uh, internet. No, that, sorry, sorry. It doesn't include electricity. I'm paying 20,000 a month, it includes internet, the gym, and the pool. And it's right outside IT Park. And it's one of the newer and cleaner condos that I saw around here for around the same price as the other ones. But I just like this one a lot better. Um, Keon Philippines, where are you right now? I'm here in Cebu City, bro. Zef, Alex, that's like marketplace. If you know price, I don't bother. See, yeah, that's the other thing, guys. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, this is just me. If I'm walking through somewhere and if I don't see prices, I don't even bother asking. But if I'm walking through somewhere and I see a clear price of like, let's say mangoes for like 80 pesos, I might be inclined to buy some because it's right there for everyone to see. You know, it's not some different price for different people, but that's just me. Um, that's obviously a small example. Um, Don Murphy, they don't they don't post prices because they use agents and the price uh, fluctuates with foreign or locals. Yeah, exactly. Corey, how's Palm? Uh, Palm is great right now. She's in Oslo with her friend that came from Thailand, and the girls are just out having a good time. Uh, they asked me to join, of course. I said no, I don't want to be a th third wheel. Have fun with your girlfriend. Do what you got to do. Um, what's next, Lavina? How's Palm? I just answered that. She'll go back to Thailand or stay a bit longer in the Philippines. So Palm has been kind of contemplating what she should do. She's supposed to go back in a week, but I have a feeling she might extend her stay. We'll see when she comes back what she wants to do. Um, 
me, I avoid taxis because a lot of them is making me pay more. Yes, yeah, Sasha, especially Manila. I noticed that taxi drivers in Manila are horrible. And here at the Philipp- uh, in Cebu, barely ever it happens. This is the first time, and I take taxis daily, regularly. Usually they're 100% polite and nice, and I usually like round up to the next 10 or whatever it is. So they end up making the same amount they may have scammed me for anyway. So yeah, taxis are fine in Cebu, but definitely not Manila. FK Av, just uh, know your rights. I, that's the thing, something I don't know my rights here in the Philippines. Uh, Nathaniel says, calm down, Alex. It's all good, my brother. <laughs> I am calm. I got really angry at something recently. I think the taxi driver thing, That's that was it. I used to have real serious anger issues, so I'm trying to work on these things. Um, uh, Lex, even locals get scammed by those taxi drivers. It's not a foreigner issue. Better use Grab so you'll know how much to pay, and you can still tip if you feel more generous. Thank you, Lex. You're, that's a great idea. Michelle. Michelle is on um, on the live stream. She always comments. She says, hi, Alex. Good morning there. Good to see you. Where's Palm? Uh, yeah, Palm is on a trip with her girlfriend. Sunny G. Which country is better for living, Thailand or Philippines? Sunny G, it really depends on what you want. Thailand's an amazing place. I've been there four times, but so is the Philippines. I've extended my visa twice already. If you want English and uh, ease of stay here regarding visa and immigration, Philippines. If you want infrastructure, fast internet, and maybe more street food, Thailand. And the beaches are pretty much the same. Maybe Thailand has a little bit more... I don't know. It's, it's pretty much the same. I think just depends on what you want from your travels and what do you need for your lifestyle. Lex says, for goods and services, pricing should be the same for everyone unless you are entitled to a discount as a ma- mandated by law. For example, PWD, senior citizen, students, military, etc. Great point. Uh, Steve says, uh, Cebu taxis are better than Manila. Definitely. Explore Bangkok. Can you use Grab or other apps in Cebu? Yes, you can. You can use both Grab and I think just grab as far as taxis that I know. But yes, you can use apps for sure. Uh, and he also says, and is it reliable? I say, yeah, the majority of the time, grab is definitely reliable. Casey Wood. Hi, Alex. First time attending a live uh, stream with you, event with you. Thank you for your info. You're welcome. Cassie or Casey, sorry. Um, I think it's Casey. <laughs> Thank you and welcome to the live stream. Time to have a sip. 58 people watching this, guys. Take a quick second. Hit the like button. And tomorrow, I have a very, very cool video coming about foreigners giving advice about coming to the Philippines. So I'm excited to share that with you guys. And I will go from there in a second when I have a sip of this. That's why I need an assistant to go through the stuff, read the questions. I feel like I'm boring by myself now. Where's her energy, right? All right. So that's all the questions. Let's go back up and see if I miss anything because I suck. Matthew says, hello from Virginia Beach. In some countries, prices vary based on what they can get. So no set price. In Colombia, first thing I say is, cuanto cuesta, cuanto cuesta, I guess, how much? Yeah, but the problem is, I got to learn the numbers, right? So if I say how much and they tell me a number, if I don't know the number, then I pretty much, I'm screwed anyways, right? So um, so if you're going to ask how much in the language of the country, you best start learning how to, like, read and say those numbers as well right so um levels of madness the taxi ride was just that you were taken for a ride french words were warranted at that point yeah i mean i was really fuming at that point the thing that bothered me was him getting out of a car his car and talking shit about me to the locals when i can hear him right there and then i know for a fact he knew how to speak english and i know for a fact that he knew how to get to tops which is like one of the most popular places here and i know he made a wrong turn on purpose so everything he was doing was just taking me off so i just wasn't gonna stand for that um yeah that's it okay so let's go back down zef says alex i drove uh, a motorbike in the philippines uh, when i needed an oil change i asked the mechanic how much i told him give me the total price because they would say uh 60 peso but it was only the labor add oil filter yeah exactly that's how it is sometimes especially in canada too the scams all over the world so if you don't know how things are done, you might get scammed. But that's a good point to give you the total price. Total price. Uh, Azda is here. Hello, Azada. Uh, Sunny G, how is nightlife in the Philippines? Any walking street or Bangla Road in the Philippines? Um, I'm ashamed or not ashamed. Um, sadly, I've yet to experience any nightlife here. I know there's like a Mango Street here that's supposed to have all the bars and the red light district and stuff like that. 
I haven't been there yet. Um, there is a few like rooftop lounges, and I'm actually next to 88th Avenue, which has got some cool bars there. Um, there are some really cool. I'm actually close to Icon, which is a nightclub as well. So my location is kind of walking distance to three really major attractions. I haven't been to Icon, the nightclub, because I feel like I'm too old for that now. Uh, at least clubbing, right? Uh, Verified is a rooftop lounge. I might go there at some point. And I went to 88th Street for some Korean buffet, which was nice because I had a few bars with music and stuff. Oh, and the Park Social. So nightlife isn't as big as like Phuket or Pattaya, but there's still some things you can do here. Um, Born Ed says, you can rent a motorbike for 500 to 600 a day. I'm not trying to die out here, bro. I don't know how to ride a motorbike. And I got into an accident in Thailand. You guys can watch that video on the channel. And also, I, yeah, I don't know the driving habits and driving culture here doesn't make sense to me. So I'm not about that motorcycle life. Uh, FK Off says, no matter how bad you get, how mad you get, just try to be patient with the locals, especially if you're out in public. Getting a fight might get a foreign or deporter, especially if you have no witness to help you. I agree. Great point. And otherwise, if you're the one who fights and a lot of people haven't witnessed, locals will usually be on your side and defend you. Great tip. Again, a keeper for a motorbike, a uh, counterpart of a grab, try ANCAS or Joyride. Yeah, another, I'm trying Joyride, ANCAS, and Maxim are great applications if you guys, the good thing about the Philippines compared to Thailand, let's say, here on the back of a motorbike, they give you a helmet, which is great. In Thailand, majority of people don't give you a helmet. So you pretty much have to like hope and pray you don't get to an accident. Here, all those applications, and even like the Habo Habo, which is like this random guy on a motorbike that offers you a ride, they give you a motorcycle helmet, which is great. And for some reason, my phone, I think because it knows maybe somehow I'm Canadian because, you know, Google takes all that information. I can't download ANCAS. It's not on my Google App Store or sorry, my yeah, Google App, but my Play Store. And I try with two different phones and it still doesn't work. But I have Joyride and Maxim, both great applications. And they're cheap and reliable, and they come pick you up, and it's not bad. Uh, Lavina says, duty calls. have to go back now. Great to see you live. Cheers, Alex. Lavina, have a good day at work, and we'll talk again later. Uh, Michelle, yes, Alex, not only foreigners get scammed here, also locals, so you better be careful with that. Definitely. I think uh, I've learned my lesson now. And Zef, sa Zef says, Alex, overall, the Philippines is a great place. Like everywhere, you will find bad apples and advantages and disadvantages, just like traffic and TO, LOL. Yeah, of course, right? So if you, guys, if you guys haven't noticed, the majority of the stuff I've been talking about the Philippines, probably positive, I'd say. Some things happen no matter where you go. And let's just be honest. I'm not one of those YouTubers that says, yeah, everything's amazing. Everything's like outstanding. There's cer certain things I will not do here, certain things I will not eat, and certain things that I just hate about the Philippines. But it has nothing to do with like my lifestyle here. For example, the heat. I, I can't get acclimated to the weather here i'm the only one sweating outside and it's embarrassing like i'm always like wiping my sweat with a towel or something i just i hate it it's just like a sauna out there and so that's one thing that i just can't wrap my mind around so this is one of those other things that something that happened to me three or two or three small incidences but i want to kind of get that out there off my chest and maybe share my experiences you guys can help me out understand if it's normal if i'm just like overthinking it or something like that Oh, uh, yeah, Rila, I tried to use a VPN to download NCAS. It still didn't work. I think because I'm logged into my uh, Play Store under my email, I think it just recognized it through that. And if I try to download that app using a secondary email, it's a whole bunch of issues. I'm sure there's a way, but I couldn't find it in the Play Store. Uh, so I just use um, Maxim and Joyride instead of NCAS. Levels of madness. Haha, -ha, can't take the heat. <laughs> You're back in the Middle Eastern. Uh, your background, yeah, my background may be Middle Eastern, but I, I live in Canada, so I don't know. It's just like the Canadian cold. I'm too accustomed to that. Uh, but that is a dirty heat or dry heat. <laughs> dirty heat. I can't even read. Yeah, so Middle East is dry heat. Out here, tropical, humid heat. Um, Daniel says, so what was your overall view of Malapasqua Island, uh, particularly the ocean water just offshore of the island? So Malapasqua is a wonderful place, a beautiful island. If you guys didn't watch the videos, I made two Malapasqua videos, and honestly, there's an absolutely gorgeous island there. The bus ride there is like a long bus ride. And um, hey, Matthew, thank you for that donation, man. I appreciate it. Um, definitely check out Malapasqua, guys. I highly recommend it. Definitely go there. It's worth the drive. It's worth the sore ass on the boat. 
It's definitely a place you could check out. And once you get to know your surroundings, you'll definitely fall in love with the place. And on the main beach, there's like three or four restaurants that are owned by like foreigners, be, like amazing food. And the, the scuba divers are like from Spain and other places. So you feel like, I don't know, it's a really cool place. I like it. Uh, Matthew, thank you for the donation. He says, I'm there soon. Love to see a tour of your place and immediate area near you. So I know what I can get for 25 to 35K a month. Thank you. Hey, that's a great idea. I did, um, when I first came to Cebu, I did an apartment tour of this place specifically. I think I might do another one uh, with a little bit more detail. Now that a lot more people are interested in the channel and Cebu itself. Um, I showed you guys a little bit. So check out the first two or three videos I made on the channel in the Philippines. Um, one is called Apartment Tour in Cebu. The other one's like, um, I think I said I hate the Philippines, but that was because of the weather was so bad. I was talking about the rain. But in that video, you can see me go from my condo to the, to the supermarket, and you'll see a nice, like, but yeah, I should definitely do one of those. You're right. Um, where are we at now? Eric Brown said, it takes a while for your body to acclimate. You're right, so, or acclimatize. Uh, Zef says, what I like about your videos, is you focus on the good stuff. I've seen uh, some other channels. It's all about scams, etc. A good note to be careful for some things, but not make a channel negative. Yeah, for sure, right? I don't want to be out here spreading negativity, but I don't want to be like one of those people that lies to viewers or someone that just says, everything's amazing. Everything can't be amazing, right? So, uh, but most of my experience, I say 90 plus percent has been amazing here in the Philippines. Uh, for going back to Matthew, 25 to 35K a month, you'll get a nice condo, but I'll be honest, um, not as like, the, there's nothing wrong with the condos. You just have to find one for me because I, I'm renting month to month. So mine is short term. But if you have a plan to stay six months or a year, you can find a decent condo, a really nice one for that price. I recommend some places, uh, maybe you can take a look. Calix and IC Park, Grand Residences. Asia Premier. Uh, I would try to avoid Avita. If you look online, there's a lot of Avitas, but for some reason, I looked at two Avita condos. I didn't like them. Um, next, click the like, everyone, to help Alex. Zef, thank you. Yeah, click the like. Uh, as I mentioned before, I don't think the likes matter as much anymore, but why not? Let's hit that like button. We have 55 people watching. Tonight is Saturday night, 10 p.m. I'm here like a loser, not doing anything. I feel so blah in some way so i decided to join this live chat to get you guys on this community talking to me cheer me up a little bit i just had a large pizza some pasta i'm like bloated but, but um i had to do something tonight right so this was my happy place and that's why i came here where are we at next um eric says rent in the philippines are very overpriced in my opinion especially in manila uh eric i'm looking to rent a subic and it's so expensive um, yeah, I think the Philippines rent compared to other other Asian countries, I do find rent here be a little bit more expensive. Um, what's next? Sunny G says, "Have you ever worked in the Philippines or Thailand?" I've never worked in the Philippines or Thailand. I have not, and I don't intend to. I don't think I'm cut out for the work culture here. I just don't possess the skills, I think, <laughs> and the patience. People here work hard for very little money. So I think if I were to work in these countries, I'd have to work for an American company online and something like that. Um, Keeper, could you be, could you be, what? <laughs> Keeper, could be your Play Store is not set to Philippines. Try changing the country in the settings. Hey, I didn't know that. I'll definitely try that. See what happens. Eric Brown, where are the girls? Girls are everywhere. <laughs> no girls here tonight, but um, yeah. Maybe that topic can be discussed at a future date because Pond's going to kick my ass when she comes back. Uh, what's next? Um, Zeph, Alex, a loser is a Leafs fan. <laughs> Good one. Good thing I'm not a Leafs fan. So the Toronto Maple Leafs, a hockey team, for those that don't know, but I'm sure most of you guys are from the West. Um, Stephen Day, complaints about skin tax seems overblown. Here in the U.S., you are a non-resident or out-of-state talent similar. Wee. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, Nathaniel, Alice, can you tell us what to pack if you're visiting for one month? Yeah, for sure. If you're visiting Cebu or anywhere in the Philippines for one month, 100% uh, get like definitely bring some sunscreen. Here, the sunscreen is not easy to find the quality or like 100. Like 
this brings sunscreen because it's really like pricey here. So I'm going to say definitely sunscreen. Bring what else? Different types of shoes, right? So that's very simple, but like I ended up buying shoes here depending on where you're going, whether it's the beach, uh, like hiking, or just like outside because it's so hot. I'm trying to see what else. Honestly, everything else is pretty much the same. This is sunscreen that kind of stood out for me. Uh, bring some sort of headwear, like a hat, unless you want to buy one here. I pack very lightly, so for me, it's not something that I can't get here or find here. I'm trying to think if there's anything you should pack. Even like hot sauce. For me, yeah, I can find my hot sauce here. Um, so anything cooking-wise, ingredient, but you don't want to cook for a month, so you're fine. I'm trying to think. Honestly, I'm not very good help with that because Philippines, at least Cebu City, has pretty much everything I need when I travel. Nothing aside from sunscreen or a specific type of snack or something that you're just where you're coming from has. Um, Snar Vian says, I think in many tourist areas, tourists include Filipino tourists are charged the same as you. Only the residents of the area will have the price cheaper. Well said. And levels of madness. In order to work in the Philippines, you need to take a couple of courses. One of the courses is called Scam the Tourist 101. <laughs> That's funny. Um, levels of Madness, good info on the sunscreen. Get a thumbs up. Thank you. Yeah, that's for sure the number one thing. Uh, Eric Brown, skin tax is very real in the Philippines. Um, my girlfriend really dislikes it to the point she will buy stuff without me. <laughs> hey, that's true. Like if I were traveling with a Filipina or Filipino, I would ask them to go ahead and negotiate or set prices or email people or something because it's, of course, much more easy for them to communicate, number one, and most likely at least get, like, charged less than I would get charged. And this is just generalizing, but if you have someone with you, why not have them uh, do that part? Um, what else? That's it? I read everything? I'm excited. I'm going back up to see if I missed any question, guys. Click the like, everyone. Yep. Uh, what like of our videos? I focus on positivity. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um, Levels of Madness says, Eric Brown, a good name for price difference. Skin tax. Yeah, that is a good pr uh, name for price difference. So today, I'm going to share a little bit of story with you guys. Today I went out there and I was trying to do some interviews to make some content for the next video. And for some reason, I had like an overwhelmingly, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, I was rejected a lot more than usual. So it was like maybe like a bad run of people, but like I think two or maybe three or four times in a row, people rejected me. I've mentioned this before. I don't take it personally, but it was like, oh, <laughs> I just want to talk to you. So that was kind of annoying. And one person, we had a good conversation, but I think they said some things that they did not want to be on camera. So they emailed me after asking me not to use the video. And of course, I, I will not use the video at all. And so I deleted it off my camera just in case somehow it gets out there. And I reassured them that it will not be used. So, yeah, that's kind of an interesting story if anyone cares. Something that happened to you today. So hopefully you guys find tomorrow's video uh, more interesting, or at least, you know, show some love. You know, it was so hard getting people. Uh, what's next? Sunny G, which girls are better, Thai or Filipino? And easy to date. Easy to date Filipinos. Uh, Eric Brown, problem is my girlfriend looks like city girl who probably goes out with a foreigner problem. <laughs> okay, well, maybe that's a, you can't do anything about that, right? So what can you do? Uh, I guess she's fancy, huh? Um, Snar VN said, Philippines does not have double taxing. It does not matter if you're a foreigner or Filipino. Many tourists are, many tourist areas will charge you more if you are not a resident of the area. Good to know. There we go. We got some locals talking about being um, charged more if you're not from that area itself, regardless of you're a foreigner or a person from the Philippines. That's it. How long? 39 minutes. So we're deep 40 minutes. We'll do at least an hour, guys. I think there's a lot to discuss. Um, about dual pricing and other things like that. So I'm trying to see if there's, speaking of pricing, one thing I do appreciate it with the Philippines a lot is, I know I mentioned visas before, but if you're traveling long-term, visas do become an issue, right? Some countries, they give you only 60 days. So after the second month, you have to leave the country. You have no other option. But here in the Philippines, they go ahead and allow you to continuously extend your visa. Oh, I don't have my, I keep forgetting my wallet. But I just got my iCard, which is my residence card for the Philippines. So that's kind of cool, right? 
that I'm actually now I can use that to get a bank account, etc. Here in the Philippines, they want you here, they want you to stay, and they charge you a little bit for the visa, but as I think it works out to like $30 or $20 to $30 a month if you continuously extend your visa, which is amazing for those of you that want to travel here long term. Um, so I appreciate that a lot. Um, Hugh says, hi, Alex. So collectively from your interviews, are Philippine girls looking for Western guys or happy with locals? That's a very general question, right? So let's talk about dating a little bit. I think it's important. Um, although I don't want to generalize, but there's like a clear four or five types of girls in the Philippines. I mentioned this in one of my videos before, and you guys, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get hate for this or some sort of like, um, people getting get offended or triggered, but it is what it is. So you're going to have your high-class women here in the Philippines, which are women that come from good families, have educations, and they have their own money. They're not going to care about you. They're not going to care if you're a foreigner. They're not going to care where you come from. They usually have their own circle of friends and people they know. They're going to date those kind of people. And although they may not be rude to you, they'll simply re reject you if you try to talk to them. And sometimes when you're out there, you can clearly see the difference between a woman like that, perhaps, compared to other women. So... Unless you're working with these women or you're in the family somehow or if you're like going to school and they happen to be in your school, there's no chance of you getting with these girls unless they get to know you. So that's the first type. The second type is the working class woman you find around like the IT park, which is like all the call centers or like a business park or malls. Now these women, they are, you know, once again, they're, they're working for themselves. They're educated and you might have a chance with them, but they're a little bit more open to socializing and being approached and talking to you. And then there's like the, the province girls, right? So those girls are maybe a little less fortunate from coming from like, um, maybe not so, how can I say, financially stable homes and they're looking for maybe a way out from the current situation. Maybe they haven't been to school. So those are the easy, let's say, girls here because let's face it, they want a way out from their situation, their living situation. So the province, I'm just saying province because I don't know what label to give them. So people from those kind of places would, definitely be interested in Western men. But for you as guys, as men, it depends what you want, right? Do you want an easy woman? Do you want someone younger to take care of you? I don't know your age. I don't know your financial st like situation. So if you want to generalize women here, that's how they are. But overall, women here are 1000% more approachable, kind, and just nicer than Western women because like at least to the general male looking guy, not just like if you're Brad Pitt or something. Yeah, that's been my observation so far. Okay, let me go back up. So, so many questions now. Um, Eric Brown says, you can easily talk to Filipina and they're Christian too. Winner Filipina, but I'm biased, LOL. Yeah. Um, Steven says, uh, I like your channel content. I agree it is better to spend or send your Filipina shopping, but a tourist sites, I don't mind. They're usually a few US dollars more. If you're that cheap, don't travel. Yeah, I agree. If it's a few dollars, it's sometimes though it's not about the money, it's the principle, right? Whether it's a dollar or a thousand dollars, no one likes the feeling of being taken advantage of just for your skin color or your nationality or where you're from. Um, Zef says, Alex, one thing they do is that they is that as you come close to closing hours, many times they will say it's not available, but the truth is they don't want to work longer than the closing hours. Zef, yes, that happens a lot here, guys. So if you're coming to the Philippines. Um, don't expect everything to be available. So I'll tell you guys another story. Actually, for the past two weeks, I've been going to like a place called Jayco and they have amazing fresh donuts and everybody goes there for donuts. That's like the number one thing people go there for. 99% of the sales are donut sales. Me being a guy that has nothing to do all day, I want a coffee sometimes. So, but they never have coffee. So I don't understand why. And I don't want, I want to ask them, why don't you have coffee? So for two weeks, like, Every so often I go there, no coffee, no coffee, no coffee. So one time I saw the manager, I'm like, excuse me, uh, when will you have coffee? Because I've noticed you haven't had coffee. He's like, oh, we have coffee. I'm like, okay. Kind of weird because they had a sign that said not available. Anyways, I got my coffee at Jayco. I had my donut. I went back yesterday. There was no manager. The lady said, sorry, no coffee. I'm like, okay, cool. So I took a taxi to the other Jayco in the mall because I had this like feeling of wanting a donut and coffee. They're like, oh, sorry, the coffee, we don't have any. So yeah, I know what you mean about closing hours, but not even closing hours. 
if it's just one or two orders, they don't bother making it. At least that's the impression I get. And that's not the only place, McDonald's, KFC, all these regular places like KFC that I go to sometimes, they never have French fries. And I don't understand why. I'm like, <laughs> who's ordering your stuff? But these are the type of things you have to get used to, get accustomed to. You have to like change the way you think because things are just done differently here. People accept it. They don't, they don't care. They'll just eat something else. They're not as picky as myself or as like spoiled, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. Um, where are we at here? Let me try to go ahead and read these comments. Um, Star says, even Filipinos who don't need to speak local language, the vendor will charge you more anyways. So yeah, even if the Filipinos don't speak a local language, I guess the vendor will try to charge them more. You, Alex, what made you bring your Thai girlfriend to the Philippines? The old saying is that you don't bring sand to the beach. Well, first of all, who says I have sand? hey -o. Zef. Hugh, Jarsal, ouch. Uh, Don Murphy, Philippines has skin tax, alive and well. Been there six times, lived there for a few months. I paid more all the time. Most things, apartments, taxis, other things, not much saying as much uh, in saying that. Eric, I get my GF to renegotiate big purchases. I'm not bothered to about the smaller purchases too. Natalia Jones, Alex, do you recommend renting for one month for having a base or just renting as you go of you are planning on visiting several places or when there. So that's a good question, right? If you want to stay more than three months, two or three months, definitely rent per month and then have a base. If you're there just for a month, then definitely just do not rent a month long term because you kind of isolate yourself to that city. I'd say do week by week or wherever you're traveling to. But two or three months or longer, then I would say just to have a base because you save money in the long run. For example, for me, I do weekend trips. So if I go somewhere Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I still have my place in Cebu being rented monthly. And I just pay for a hotel for three nights when I travel to like Mount Pasqual, Moabal, whatever, Boho, all these places. So that's what I recommend because you do end up saving a lot money, a lot more money by like just renting on a monthly basis. Uh, Nathaniel, Alex, do you recommend? I just read that. Levels of madness waiting for Karen to go off. There has to be at least one of them around here. Uh, yeah, there must be. Don Murphy, I'm coming back in September. Hey, -o, welcome, Don. Hugh Jarsel, Zef. I wasn't being a uh, pa -pa -pa, Zef. Uh, Zef says Calus is a nice place. I agree, Zef. Oh, my goodness. I got to go way up, guys. Give me a second. I'm catching up with all the comments and questions. There we go. RLV, local vendors will overcharge fellow locals here, but they know that it's fair, right? Price should be. Uh, let me re let me read that again. <laughs> uh, local vendors will overcharge fellow locals here, but we know what is the fair price or what it should be. I got it. As Zef says, um, ba -ba. Eric Brown, well said about Filipinos in general. Uh, the Boraham Show Sausage Fest here. Uh, were you expecting women? <laughs> what are you doing here if you're expecting women? This is a, I'm talking about being overcharged. I'm not here having one of those channels that just parade random girls to get views. Yeah, I don't know if we're the clown or someone else is a clown. <laughs> RLV says, hey, Alex, what telco are you using there? I'm using Globe. Uh, living cost in the Philippines, $1,200 a month if you're single and don't over party. Um, RLV, the donut thing now here in Randy Donuts is uptown. Okay. Randy Donuts. Sunny G, how many messages parlor or how many massage parlors in the Philippines compared to Thailand? Thailand has a hundred massage parlors on a street. The Philippines will have one. So massage parlors, hands down Thailand for sure. I've never had a I've had one massage in all my years of travel and I could not stop laughing. I was there with my friend and we were laughing for an hour straight. I think they gassed the room or something. I've never laughed so hard in my life. I don't know what happened to me, but they kept twisting and turning me, and it was just like an experience I'll never forget. <laughs> um, Snar says, even Filipinos do not like taxi. They always want more from the meter. This is why I would prefer Grab. Good point. My girlfriend prefers Grab too. Uh, Joe Mama, what up with the late? What up with the hate with Palm? I'm Pinoy and would love a Thai girlfriend. No one's hating Palm. <laughs> um, Hugh says, it's shit. <laughs> he said. It shit me the most when I go to the McDonald's and they say no ice cream. To be fair, 
in the West, there's never ice cream in McDonald's. But here, there's no ice cream, no Coke, no French fries, no ketchup, no coffee, no pie, no whatever. So whatever you're feeling, multiply that by like 10 at least. Um, I think McDonald's needs to do a times two ice cream machine. They always seem to be broken. There was a nice documentary about why McDonald's ice cream machines are always broken. There's somewhere on YouTube. I try to find that if you can. Um, I feel I can see myself on the TV back there. It seemed weird. Let me get some loosen up over here. Um, Zef says, as long as we understand which grab we talk about. <laughs> um, RLV, when are you in the Philippines to use grab? Oh, yeah. Whenever you're in the Philippine cities, use grab. And Nathaniel, thanks. Snar, the problem with us Filipinos, we just do not argue with the taxi driver. We felt like it's not worth the trouble. So when a foreigner will argue about it, taxis get offended. Yeah, that's the other thing, right? So that could be a thing. That's one thing I've noticed a lot. Filipinos, I think some of them, some of them are a little bit sensitive. Like, so for example, if I say something, it's not me personally. It's just in the comment section or in the videos. For example, I had a guy that said he was from India in the video. He's saying how Philippines traffic is the only thing he dislikes about the Philippines. Uh, people went off about, oh, you're from India. Why are you complaining about traffic? The guy never said that traffic in this country is good. He never said he likes traffic better there. He was simply trying to figure out something bad about this country. And he said a problem about the traffic. Now, just because he's talking about traffic here doesn't necessarily discount the traffic problem in his own country. Like, that's something that I find quite often when someone says something maybe not so positive. People, like, get offended so much. It's nothing to do with that, right? And instead of maybe trying to focus on an issue and, like, discussing it with some sort of, like, you know, some points, people get offended. Now, if someone makes fun of Canada, that's their opinion. And if I can't defend it, I might have to agree with it or try to prove them wrong instead of saying, why don't you go back to the U.S. then? Same with my, is the Philippines safe? And the people are like, why don't you ask Americans? I'm not in America, bro. I'm not in the U.S. Why would I go ask about U.S. safety? I'm not trying to make content about world safety like levels. I'm here in the U. I'm here in the Philippines. People want to know if it's safe here if they want to come here. So it's like a weird kind of like mentality with a certain small group of people in the Philippines where they're kind of over, um, I think, dramatic about certain things. I don't know. I think that's too much pride, which is not a bad thing. But I think they should take a step back because it's not meant in an offensive way. If someone can, if someone can only think about traffic being the only thing that's wrong with the Philippines, that should make you proud. How much good things you guys are like liking about the country, or how how well you do everything else. Just saying, my two cents. Um, Palm is on a vacation with a girlfriend somewhere. Uh, Zef Lacap says, Hugh Jarso, very true. I would get MC Mastercard, and for two weeks they did not have orange juice. Oh, MC it might not be massive McDonald's, I guess. I told some it's not true. Suddenly they found some in the back store. Yeah, exactly. I think if we don't mention it, they don't do anything about it. Hugh, hey, Alex, what happened to the Daily Shorts to meet that guy you wanted to interview? Meet? I don't know who he is, but the shirt stopped fast. <laughs> did you meet interview him yet? I did make a video on day two about that. So, yeah, so he is Kyle. He's a Canadian as well. Uh, I only reached out to him because many people told me to reach out to him. So a lot of my subscribers said, hey, reach out to Kyle, reach out to Kyle, interview him. I looked at his channel. The dude is like massive. He's got over a million subscribers. And when I sent him an email, he didn't send me one back. I'm sure he's busy. Maybe he's not checking his emails. So the reason why I made those shorts was to get his attention, right? To make the shorts big enough that he actually sees the message. So he reached out to me immediately after the, the first short. And he says he's really nice, told me about his journey across country. He's on a motorcycle. He's got a lot of things on, on a plate. So I had to stop the shorts immediately. I'm not going to harass him in any way. That's what happened with that. He's just too busy right now. So maybe sometime in the future, I'll reach out to him again. Um, Sandy7, have you been to Jamaica? I wish. I've never been to Jamaica, but I want to go at some point. Eric Brown, uh, my Filipino will not take any crap from a scammer taxi drivers. Beware of the taxi drivers. Yes. Um, Khalif says, give me a shout out. Shout out, Khalif. 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 DJ Khalif. Kh. I like saying the Kh. K-H. Khalif. Uh, hello, my Alex. Tony from Toronto says hi. Hey, Tony's here. Hello, Tony. Uh, if you're there by January next year, I'll pay you a visit. Definitely. Uh, Zell B, how long did you stay in the Philippines? Great question, Zell B. I've been contemplating. I don't know what to do, where to go. There's a lot of things happening, guys. Um, I want 
what I would love to do is spend a week in every single major city in the country, but due to budgetary restrictions and, you know, basically just the budgetary thing, I can't afford to stay at a hotel every single week. That's why I have this place for a month. So I try to make weekend trips somewhere. So I don't know what to do next, where to go next. I would love to visit some major places like Davao, Dumaguete, and places like that. Maybe uh, Chargao. I'll, I'll try to get to Palawan, but Palawan's too expensive right now, at least in the near future. It's at least fifteen to 20,000 pesos for my trip. I know it's not a lot in the grand scheme of things, but for two days or three days right now, it's kind of out of my reach. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll stay here another two months or another month. I have no idea, to be honest. No plans of exit right now. Um... What's next? Let's see. Kalf says, bro, why do you look Indian? Why do I look Indian? That's got to be the stupidest question I heard. <laughs> if I look Indian, then I look Indian. What do you mean why? That's the way I was born. If I look Indian, Mexican, Middle Eastern, this, this is my appearance. It's like me saying, why is your name Khalif? Or Khalif. That's your name, right? Aha, uh -huh, bro. We did that. Hugh says, Zef, haha, tell me about it. Nothing worse waiting in the drive through and then you get to the speaker and then, you know, <laughs> stuck in Sid McFlurry and then say, oh, machine is broken. Yeah, exactly. Stephen Day, Pam has definitely added a little different perspective to your travels. She is funny. Your videos uh, have energy and we enjoy hearing Filipino and foreign opinions. I like, but Stephen, Pam is not Filipino, bro. Uh, keep her massage parlor at a different location because here in our street, we've got four. I guess so too, right? Azef, Hugh, Jarsal, Alo, I know I can be frustrating. Uh, but where are we at? Um, they should just be honest about it. I know, right? Just be honest about it. What's next? Zef, Hugh, uh, Papa, what's next? Keeper, that's true. There really are a lot of sensitive people here. Seems so, right? <laughs> Hugh, Jarsal, not like they are squeezing the orange juice themselves. Uh, great, great point. In terms of supply chain, the suppliers will prioritize Thailand or Western foods because they are king of tourism. Here in the Southeast Asia, Philippines only fifth in ranking. Hope you understand. Yeah, I understand, but okay, then order your shit earlier. I'm just saying. I worked in food and beverage all my life. So certain things have a very, very long shelf life. You don't need to have a fresh on the same day, same week, or even same month. How hard is it to order some Coca-Cola syrup bags for the year even if you want? They have an extremely long shelf life. There should be no excuse for some of the things, just poor management, incompetence, and just like people being lazy, like the front staff, they don't want to do something. It's happened to me several times. I can't, like, the other thing, the coffee place here that I go to, I try to go to call, I'm not going to say the name, but it's in the mall. All they do is sell coffee. That's the only thing they have. They have coffee beans. I've been there probably 10 times, only two times they had coffee. But the store is open, they have no coffee. Whether I go 9 a.m., 1 p.m., 4 p.m., never have any coffee, they say next week, next week. So I keep wondering, why are you open and what are you doing being open? Just saying. One of those few things, right? Uh, some things just could be better and it comes down to maybe supply chain one or two things, but I don't think it's every store everywhere. So some things that I've noticed here as well, this is another thing you got to ad adapt, right? You got to adjust your like expectations. This is not some of the countries you've been to and because Philippine geography is a little bit weird. So Maybe you're right, but for some things, I, I disagree with that. Um, what's next? Zell B. Yes, you can, sir, if you live in the province for 600 bucks, it's big enough and it's peaceful and fresh. I think I missed a whole bunch of questions. <laughs> uh, give me a minute. <laughs> okay, there we go. We're back to this. Um, Hugh says... Not like they're squeezing the juice themselves, you're right. Uh, Eric Brown. Uh, have you had any dates there? I've had some dates, yes. Uh, Anthony, what advice could you give for a first time vlogger? Well, Anthony, what is your vlog about? What do you, what's your content? You give me some information and I'll give you some advice. Zef, uh, hello, why do you little hair on your head? I use Ajax cleaner, duh. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Ajax cleaner. That's why you know, right? Some some of us we're not blessed with hair. Um, level of madness. Haha, <laughs> great response. That has to be the stupidest question. I would click on the thumbs up again, but it doesn't help. Uh Steven never says she was Filipino. She's Thai, you assumed. 
Well, you also said that it's good to get perspective of foreigners and Filipinos. I thought you meant about Palm because you mentioned her in the first sentence. Um, Endocad, are you from the hospitality and tourism background? Yes, I am. I worked in restaurants from dishwasher to cook, server, restaurant, supervisor, and a casino manager. And I also work in the film industry. So a little bit about me. Um, Hugh says, uh, Jarso, uh, Hugh Jarso says, did you notice a feel racism from the Philippines girls towards your Thai girl? One of the last videos when your friend was nice, the sweet, uh, yeah, a little bit. Palm does get a little bit of, uh, not racism, but I think most girls are, when she speaks, they don't believe that she's not Filipino. <laughs> so I think sometimes they think she's trying to be something she's not, but she really is Thai, like even at the immigration office. Anyways, not not very obvious, but I feel like there has to be some sort of like cold shoulder from some people towards her. But I don't think that has anything to do with the fact that Filipinos are doing it. That might come in any country that you visit with someone. Um, Zell says, I used to live in the Dumaguete city for 10 years. Would it be a good choice to go there? That city is very clean and friendly people. Okay, thank you for that. Hello, host. Hello, Elsa. Call the difference between Filipina and Western women. Big difference. Uh, we've covered this several times, but I think Filipina women here are much more um, caring uh, and they make you feel special. They're very, I don't know, they're just very approachable. They they don't talk back. They're not, I mean, this is very general, but there's not that head to head collision here a lot. People kind of a little bit more passive when you get into an argument, maybe. But I think Filipinos are just easygoing in, in a lot of ways. Um, What's next? I'll say, how, hello, everyone. Anthony, you ever try and make a vlog in one continuous shot without editing? Yes, I did. So the video I have on my channel about why I like the Philippines or something like that, it was like a 12-minute long video of me talking about why I like the Philippines and why it was to extend my stay. That was just 12 minutes of me talking and babbling. Um, Zef says, Alice, customer service needs to improve in the Philippines. Foreigners would call on them for the lack of service. Filipinos would just move on to and avoid drama. Yeah, but think of it this way. It's not drama. If you're in a restaurant, let's say you're, you're a Filipino. I heard something like the average daily salary is like 600 pesos. Let's just say 1,000 pesos for the, you know, just averaging. And you go to a restaurant and your meal costs 1,200 pesos. So if you spent your whole day working just to pay for two dinners and no one came to check up on you, the food is cold, no one served you water, no one said hello, and you have to always look for people to get cutlery. And like, come on, that that is not lacking. That's not drama. That's just basic thing you're paying for. It's not like these people are giving you free food, right? So I that argument again, people accept things that maybe should be improved. I don't know, but people in the West, I think we have like seven steps of service or fourteen steps of service. Something ridiculous that every single restaurant, at least even fast food chains, I like. I went into Viking, this all we could eat buffet, right? It's like 840 pesos per person. I go to the front, the girl doesn't even look up at me. She starts talking in Filipino or Basai or something. So I'm like, Are you talking to me? And like, she, she looked up, she's like, eh. I'm like, Okay. And then she's looking at me, I'm like, What's going on? She's like, She's like, eh. I'm like, What? <laughs> so it was like a really awkward, I'm like, Hello, like, what? what I, I was so weirded out because I'm like, I think she wanted me to do something, but I didn't know. And then some guy in the back room like this, and I had to follow them. Then we sat down. There was no there was no cutlery, no water, no napkins. And then we just sat there looking at each other, Palm and I. I think I'm like, I think we're supposed to go and get the food now. Then we went and got the food, and not a single time that any interaction happened with us or anyone else until I asked for the bill. So that is something that it's not drama, it's just like basic needs that you're paying for. Um can foreigners get a job in the Philippines? Yes, you can, but I think you need a work visa. Will you still be there by December in the Philippines? I might. Uh, I'll be honest. I may or may not be here by December. Um, RLV says, with tight supplies right now, uh, first Thailand, Vietnam, Charles, I guess Singapore, locals who prioritize Western foods can feel it. Okay. Uh, hello, dear vlogger. Hello, dear. Leo. I say says, better go to Bantan or Mual Bol. I've been to both places, beautiful places. Will you still be there in December? Maybe, maybe not. 
can afford to get a hotel job. You can if you have a work visa. Um, oh, that's so sad. She seems like a really nice and friendly girl. And that's sad that the Filipinas aren't being nice. I wouldn't say they're purposely being mean, but I've noticed some cold shoulders towards Palm, but we don't take it personally. I mean, it's hard not to take personally, but she has to explain to people all the time. She's not, you know, she doesn't speak Visaya or Filipino. And then they get kind of annoyed that they have to speak in English to her. And I'm not going to be like fighting her battle. She's a big girl herself. She can do what she wants to do. Sometimes just sit back and let her kind of uh, talk until, you know, they have an understanding of everything. Um, Anthony, been, been LDR, long distance relationship for almost one year. Now planning to move to Ilocos, sir, uh, with my girlfriend and live permanently. Possible start from... Possible start family. My girlfriend's 4'11", baller, and straightforward woman. I like that, right? Good for you, man. Good luck. And now living in Europe, I have learned how to properly complain to authorities. The majority of the Filipinos just complain but never document it. EX, uh, we complain about the taxi, but we still pay. Yeah, that's one thing. That's one thing I've noticed Filipinos will accept just saying, oh, that's just the way it is. You can change things, you know, especially something like that. You don't have to accept something you're not happy with. For example, Palm just messaged me. She said that, she got a hotel in the city she's in. She paid through Agoda, but when she got to the hotel, there was no rooms. So she's like, well, I already paid, and you accepted my reservation. They just kind of like the manager was rude, and they said just to call Agoda, whatever, right? So something like that, I think some people don't realize, not just the Philippines, all across the world. One bad review from her is going to lead to a second one. It's going to lead me to make an account and write a bad review about them. And next thing you know, they lost three or four customers within like the next week or two when they read that review, right? So customer service is very important, especially in the food and beverage industry, because people will just stop going back to these places. For me, for example, I don't give places a second chance, very rarely. If you don't want my business, if you don't want my, you know, me coming to your restaurant every day eating, like I will not come back. I, every night, I pretty much eat three things every night here. So three or four things, unless I'm out somewhere different, somewhere new. So everybody knows me by name at these restaurants now because they provide good service. They're friendly to me, and the food is delicious, right? So repeat customer. That's how things work, and I think that kind of mindset needs to be applied to many things in any country. What's next? Um, Khalif says, healthcare Philippines. I don't know anything about it. I would not want to be sick in the Philippines. To be honest, I heard some horrible stories from a couple of expats. Somebody had a heart attack and an ambulance took like three hours to get there or something. And someone else had an issue with their eye. And I, this is just some stuff I watched in the YouTube video. Um, what's next? Uh, no, here they don't expect a tip at all. But yeah, I leave tips usually if the service is good, just like I would in Canada. I tip the bus, like the guy that cleans my plates. Yeah, I tipped him like whatever. But yeah, he was so appreciative and thankful and he like went above and beyond and whatever. But that guy was good. But as far as the front and the server, they didn't get anything. I just tipped the, the guy that cleaned my table. Now, what's next? Zef says, hey, 69 in the chat and 61 likes. Good job. Thank you, guys. Yeah, there's 77 people. If this is your first time to the channel, which I'm sure most of you guys aren't your first time or isn't your first time, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe, guys, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Let's continue talking about some. Whoa, over an hour. I didn't even notice. We're over an hour deep into this conversation, guys. Keep them coming. Ask me any questions you have, and I'll do my best to answer them. Can I live with 500, Peter? Peter, yes, you can live with 500. So the thing is, my place right now, because I'm central, I'm paying a lot. But you can get an apartment for around 200 USD if you're not city center and if you have a long-term contract six months or a year, right? So then you have 300 left. Let's say 100 goes to miscellaneous, insurance, visa. You have 200 for food, basically. And, and if you cash the jeepney, public transportation, cook at home, you can live for 500. It'll be a very modest lifestyle, but it's possible. Um, Eric Brown says, I had British mixed Filipina girlfriend here in the UK. And lots of people assumed that she was Thai and a hooker. <laughs> okay. That's, it's 100 times worse in the Europe as far as presumptions. She was fitness model, so she wore tight clothes. Yeah, people always assume things. Uh, Snar says, healthcare in the Philippines for foreigners, Pacific Cross plus local healthcare for checkups only. Unless you are working there, then you can get a full health local insurance. Hey, good point, Snar. Thanks for sharing that. 
Property cost? I have no idea. Sorry, Khalif. Hugh says, if you're still there, we'll extend an invite. I um, I have a cabana booked at ABC Hotel, Aqua Beach Club, uh, New Year's Eve party, drinks, food, all-inclusive, pop along if you're around. Definitely, Hugh, definitely give me a shout-out if I'm here by December. I'd love to be part of your party. I say, language barrier and the things as well between Filipinos and Thai with regards to beauty pageants, there's a lot of possibilities. You're right. Asnar, property foreigners cannot own land in the Philippines. You can rent long term and build a house. You can own a condo, though. Yes, you can own a condo, but not land. I say, Venti, I complain on the spot. I'm not a typical Filipina. People usually misunderstood me because of that. You have a right to. If you're paying for something, you should get what you're paying for, whether that's service, food, a trip. Like, we would go on these excursions, right? We pay for certain things. They always say it's not available. I've been to hotels many, not many, a couple times where they say breakfast included, but it's not. So in the morning or the day when I check in, I'm like, is breakfast included? They say, sorry, we don't have. I'm like, well, I booked this place because I thought breakfast is included because if I have to pay $350 for breakfast and the room itself is only 100 it's kind of, I mean, 1000 doesn't really make sense, but they simply say, sorry, and what am I going to do? Not check in or argue and complain? That happened a couple of times or like, we go snorkeling, but there's no snorkeling gear. <laughs> so you're like, ah, I'm here for the, the goggles, man. I'm trying to see some fish. Like, sorry, we don't have it. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'll just sit on this boat. So, <laughs> yeah, there's some things like that. You need to, like, speak up. Uh, some things you can let go of. Some things you just learn from and move on. Um, what's next? Eric Brown, very different attitude with westernized Filipino, the Filipino-born bread. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so 64 people, but 65 likes. We're killing it, guys. Um, what's next? Eric says, very different. We said that. I say venti. Woohoo! Indocad, thank you. Thank you for that donation. I appreciate that. Indocad, how did you prepare your wallet? Hmm, how did you prepare your wallet? Uh, can you be a little bit more specific? Are you saying, what do I carry in my wallet? Or I'd love to know what you mean, Indocad. Uh, if you can just clarify, how do you prepare your wallet? Oh, my God. Hugh, thank you so much for that donation, bro. Uh, Hope Palm isn't upset with the crap treatment in the Philippines. You can make the New Year's party in the ABC. It will be a blast. I definitely will come, bro. Give me a shout-out when it's close to that date. Um, I don't think I'll be here by December, but you never know. The last time I said I'll be here in a month, it's been four months already. So you never know. Thank you, Hugh. Thank you, Endocad. Um, I think if you mean how much money do I have in my wallet, I usually don't carry too much cash because if I need it, I'll just pull it from the ATM. I'd rather pay that $8, uh, not $8, that $5 uh, withdrawal fee than to lose like a couple thousand pesos, right? So for me, it's worth the trade-off. I have like two or 3,000 pesos in my wallet, a lot of hundreds, fifties, and twenties, and I don't usually carry change, but that's how I prepare my wallet. If you need something else, then please let me know and I'll answer that. And I can't wait to be here till December. I'd love to join that party, Hugh. Sounds like a blast. I'm glad that I'm going to look up that hotel, see where it is. Um, ABC, it will be a blast. I'm sure it will. New Year's has to be better than the last few years due to COVID and all that. Reginald, what's up, Alex? Plan on coming October. How's the weather? Right now, every day it rains for about an hour and then clears up nicely. So it's not so bad. It does rain, but it does clears up real quick. So the weather is hot, humid. It's great, though. Uh, <clears throat> Kupalka store, are you coming back home here in Toronto or are you staying in the Philippines for good? I am not staying in the Philippines for good. I will come back to Toronto, I think, some point this year. Um, but I don't think I'll live there for a while. I'm going to be traveling until I don't know when, but not. I'm not planning on stopping anytime soon. I would love to see some other countries as well. Philippines has been great, but I can't stay here forever. Forever. Forever Roche. <laughs> see what happens. This is where the immigrant comes out, right? I'm not like a, I am a native speaker, but sometimes just like the syllables don't come out properly and I need some water. So I, I don't plan to stay here forever. At some point, I'm going to definitely uh, leave. I just don't know when that'll be and when I'll come back. Let's keep reading. Uh, I say you can own land. If you do it as corporation with Filipino, your trust. Um, get insurance like Maxi Care, very handy. I have insurance. I have my insurance through Safety Wing. Um, it's done me no harm so far, so I, I've never had to use it. I think only once, and they're pretty good. Um, but uh, I think 
I'm, I'm on the younger end of things. I'm not retired, so maybe my medical expenses aren't that expensive. Um, low calves at Peter, your 500 is good enough living in, in the Philippines, in the province. Yeah. Are you coming back home? We said that. Hugh says 100% will be good uh, money, not a cheap Charlie. Okay, so 100% I'll pay good money, not a cheap Charlie. But if I get bad service, I will never go back. I don't, um, I'm done with that. An airline, they treated me bad when I was young. Now they miss out on my first class fares. That's exactly right. See, he was saying that he's not cheap, but if he doesn't get the service he needs, he'll never go back. I'm the same way. Guys, I'll spend like more money than I should on food or anything that makes me happy. But I will never go back to the same place that tries to cheap out on like charging me for a sauce or something ridiculous. Something that I don't think is not even that. I don't mind the sauce. And that was a bad example. But if you're not going to treat me as a customer, value my, my money and bring it to your restaurant, why would I return? Or any service, right? Why would I get on this trip again if you didn't provide the service or the things you said you would, right? So, yeah, I agree with that for sure. If you have illness, live near big cities. You should not live in the rural areas. Good point. I've never flown first class. I wonder if I'm ever going to be in a position in life where I'll fly first class. That's kind of exciting. Um... Ulip says, yo, I just got in. And yes, there's a double pricing for foreigners. There's even a different price for locals and Filipino tourists in the same tourist spots. Good point. Yeah, we mentioned that earlier. Endocad, how did you prepare your wallet before going to the Philippines for expenses? Okay, yeah. Good question. So Endocad and whoever else is curious. It's not like the olden days where you had to bring a wad of money with you to exchange it at the airport and so you can have money for spending. The way I travel is I have one credit card, one debit card. Actually, I have two credit cards and one debit card. And all of those allow me to withdraw from any ATM wherever I travel. Now, my credit card is a home trust visa. This does not have an annual fee. It does not have a foreign exchange rate fee. And I can spend like at any restaurant without being charged more money. Now, it does have a cash advance fee. So if I want to withdraw money from any ATM in the Philippines, I have to pay 250 pesos which is about $5 USD, right? But that's okay because the exchange rate on that credit card is equivalent to Google. So I'm making the same amount of money as I would according to the up-to-date exchange rates. Now, some of these other cards or exchange places, they give you a lot lower exchange rates, right? So you're losing a lot more money by exchanging cash for cash. So for me, I don't mind withdrawing from the credit card. That way, I don't have a wad of money on me at all times, and I can take out money in smaller stacks as I need them. So from my monthly expenses, I usually have two withdrawals a month. So I'm spending $10 on withdrawal fees. I put my credit card in. I take out 25,000 pesos. I put 20,000 towards my rent. I have 5,000 spending until I have to pull money again. Another 25,000. So about 30,000 for the month of spending. And then I have, so there you go. That's how I travel. That's how I prepare my wallet. When I go out, I have a couple large bills, two or 3,000 pesos and some 500, 100, 50s, and 20s if I can. That way when I have to take a taxi or somewhere and I don't have to like pay 50 additional when I could just pay a 20 or something like that. That's how I prepare my wallet. I think is the best way for me at least. TND Productions in the house. Hello, I hope things are good. I'll be there next week. TND Production, bro, you reached out for a collaboration. I agree without even knowing your content or your channel. I asked for your link for your YouTube channel. You haven't provided it. You could put in the subs or in the comments now. People could check it out if they like it. They can subscribe to you. So yeah, think about it. Include your YouTube channel link in the comment section. Uh, I say Reginald, it's wet season here until February, but not always raining. Joe Mama, how much cheaper is Thailand compared to the Philippines? I think it's a slightly a little bit cheaper, but not too much. I'd say about. Maybe 10 to 15% cheaper overall in my experience and my lifestyle. Some things are cheaper here, but some things are cheaper there. But overall, because the cost of food is much cheaper in, the, in Thailand, and I eat out a lot every meal, that's why I can notice the difference. Um, Ao Mine, have you tried Manganasal? I haven't yet. I've seen it, and I want to try it. Definitely good point. I think it's just like barbecue chicken, right? Grilled chicken. Uh, RLV, thank you, Alex, for showing trying the Philippines for your fellow age groups. Philippines for the senior veteran ex expat, Thai for the younger ones like you. Well, yeah, but honestly, there's a lot of seniors in Thailand. Uh, Thailand is a very attractive for expats and retirees because they have excellent medical services and, um, yeah, 
uh, infrastructure and disability ramps and you know so it still provides a lot of good things for seniors i think just the language barrier a lot of people feel much more comfortable in the philippines however the language is english is still widely spoken in the medical community in thailand as well as the younger generation coming up a lot of them speak english so i think it's you'll be surprised how many people choose thailand over the philippines but yeah i'm glad you enjoyed the content hugh uh the hotel motto is you only live once check it out alex it looks amazing okay i'll definitely check it out hugh abc i remember that i'm sure it'll be in the comment section uh Kup kupalka store said what is the most expensive expense you've had living in the philippines except the hotel um except for the there isn't honestly like once your accommodation is taken care of things are cheap in the philippines uh taxis are really really cheap so taxis are cheap food i would say is probably the next most expensive thing if you're eating out western style food every meal it can add up but really overall it's not that expensive so if if you compare like rent it's expensive uh internet and cell phone is super cheap i pay seven dollars a month and i have like eight gigs and unlimited text and messaging that's a crazy amount of money internet's already included my air conditioning bill is sometimes high because i'm just always hot so i pay about four thousand pesos for my ac a month for all of my electricity but yeah so that's it i say venti it's always about great service that's right who's cheaper philippines or thai thailand's a bit cheaper yolo is near isle of cebu yeah, YOLO is near Isle of Cebu. Okay, I'll check it out. Peter, can I pay with crypto anywhere in the Philippines? Yes, you can. I was in Mualboal. <laughs> I like saying that, but so in Mualboal, there was a cafe actually you could pay with crypto, which is kind of cool. And so if the cafe in a random small island can do it, I'm sure other places here will accept crypto as well. Um, Reginald, thanks, I say. Okay, you guys can have that conversation. I'll go to some questions directed towards me. Uh, Khalif said, weather is weather in the Philippines. It's always hot here. You just might get some rain during rainy season. And they do actually experience some typhoons. So got to be careful with that stuff. You don't stay too near like the edges. Um, but that's just general thing. Um, I'm like zoning out, guys. <laughs> Let me try to find this. Um, Endocad, how reliable is Filipino dating websites? Well, the websites are reliable. You just have to find who the person's reliable. I would say don't ever send money to anyone you've never met in person. Don't fall for that stuff. If any woman asks you for money, I'm not saying don't help people you love, but you gotta like, you have to meet them first, right? So if it's too good to be true, it probably is. And don't forget, if you guys are older, why would any 21 year old or 25 year old or 29 year old be interested in you as like a senior for what? Let's be honest, they don't know you. They don't know who you are as a person. So obviously it's not for you as a person, right? And it's obviously for an exit plan. And people got to do what they got to do, right? Some people are not in a good financial situation. So in exchange to provide you with a good life, they want you to provide a good life for them and the family maybe, which is fine. But I say always meet the person before you do anything like that. Um, and don't do this long distance relationship, guys. Don't be on dating sites a year before you're coming here. A year is a long time. You don't know what can happen. Don't waste your time with that. If you want to come to the Philippines, if you want to date people, if you want to meet them online, sign up like two weeks before, right? A month before. So you can get the conversation going. Don't waste your time. Don't waste their time. You're not the only one they're talking to. So don't get emotionally involved with anyone unless you're going to be here very soon so you can meet them in person and decide if they're like the right one for you. Hugh, Joshua, I was going to send you the link to check out the hotel, but you can send it to my email. There's an email on my this on my info. So I'll talk now, Canada. This is my email. Anyone wants to send me an email for any reason, give me a shout. I'm always responding to everyone. So what's next? Uh Hugh. We did that to you. I put the link in the reply to your comments, but it will okay. Um low cabs, try to live in an apartment in the Philippines, cost mostly five K pesos, less than hundred bucks. Where? Where does it cost? Indocad, thank you for the ice cream, man. I really appreciate that. Much respect. Um, thank you for that donation, bro. Uh, Low Cap says, try to live in apartments in the Philippines. Cost mostly 5K pesos, less than $100. Indocab, please tell me where you can find an apartment for less than 5,000 pesos. 
Now think about this. It can't be a bed space or a room, a shared accommodation. Don't forget it has to have a gym, uh, a swimming pool, and at least in a within the city, right? I'm sure you could find a place for 5K in a shared space away from the city center. If you're spending money every day just to come into the city at the end of the month, are you really saving any money, right? Not to mention there's just a fan and no running water sometimes, all those brownouts, blackouts, no internet. So yeah, you can live as cheap as you want. I mean, you can live on the street too. <laughs> so depends on how nobody should come from the West and like basically reduce their standard of living. You should come out here to improve yourself, to have a better life. If you're gonna come out here, don't come here to make your life in a worse situation, right? I mean, you could, but like I'm saying, don't expect to like get a proper place for five thousand pesos. That's just not true. And my, I mean, I can see it. I mean, maybe I'm getting scammed, but as a foreigner. You're going to have the same tools as I do to see how you can rent a place. 5000 is not doable uh, to my standards, at least, which is very basic. So anything lower than me, that's going to be, I don't know, interesting. I'd love to see a video on someone living for under 5 k a month. Uh, Reginald says, I say venti. No itinerary yet. Just fly by the seat of my pants. Best way to do it. Reginald, that's the best way to travel. You should explore Palawan and Shargao. So I'm at... Salamat Zell, I'll take a look. Um, exactly, that's the right thing. Perfect. Snar says Filipino doctors, especially the specialists, are actually good. Most of them are trained in the US. The problem is the equipment, especially in the public hospitals. Now, for sure, I'm not doubting the, 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 the skill quality of the doctors. I think accessibility for foreigners and how many of these like clinics and senior homes and maybe just like everyday things that you might need. You know, that might be a little bit easier to get in Thailand, I think, just based off what I've seen over there. Um, levels of madness. A box of Clorox can fix a brown out most of the time. <laughs> uh, Helen reads, Alex, if you want to break from the heat, go to Bagyao and explore weather in most of the rest of the uh, Cordilleras. It's cool. I heard of this Bagyao place. I might check it out. Everyone says cooler down there to check it out. Uh, we got like one, an hour and a half, guys. I'm surprised there's so many people watching this. I, I thank every one of you guys for being here from the beginning. That's like the length of a movie. So I don't know. I must be doing something right if you guys are watching this. Uh, please hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I've been drinking this water a lot because like my throat is drying up from talking so much. But I'll try to get through everyone's comments. And until there's no more comments, that's when we'll stop the stream. Caliph says, is it easy to get girls in the Philippines as a general misconception? Yes, it's easy. Depends on what you call Like I mentioned before, depend on your standards. Girls here are like girls from any other country. But if you want like approachability or someone that, I don't know, it's, it's a, they're just a lot friendlier here. But don't expect to like be dating a supermodel just because you're a foreigner. That, that alone does not give you the, I mean, you still have to put in the work. You still have to have game to like, Get, get someone's attention or at least be polite and kind. And I'm sweating all the time. I got to turn this AC back on and off. Reginald, thank you, bro. $5 from Reginald. Alex, love your channel. Thank you for your advice. Reginald, I appreciate that, bro. Thank you so much. Tomorrow's video is going to be exciting, guys. I'm going to ask some foreigners about advice they want to give to people that want to come to the Philippines. So that's going to be exciting. I want to get some different perspectives to see what foreigners here in the Philippines have to say and some hints, some advice to give us that are trying to come to this country. Uh, Kyle, uh, tell us what you don't like the most. About so Kyle says, what don't you like the most about the Philippines? Hmm. So for me, the thing that I dislike the most about the Philippines, aside from the weather itself, is trying to see. Hmm, that's a good question. The most, I've never, I think I mentioned it in this video at some point. It's just, uh, I don't know what it is. I can't really quite, I don't know. There isn't something major. There's some small new like annoyances maybe, but there's nothing really that I can't live without. Like the the, the thing that they're always out of something in every single store, but that can come down to geography of the place, uh, like you know supply chain demands. It could be a lot of things that I'm just not understanding maybe. So maybe the heat is definitely one thing I cannot get used to. I can't bear to. It's not that bad if you're inside. But for me, I'm always sweating. I don't like that. I'm always seem, like I look angry because I'm sweating. Honestly, I've never thought of what thing that I hate the most about here. I'm trying to think. Um, 
maybe the customer service at restaurants, but even that, like, come on, just sit down and eat your food. <laughs> I really don't know. When you when you ask out loud and I have to like speak, I just can't think of too much to say, to be honest. Besides those like annoyances, I can't think of one obvious like boo boo or whatever. Um, what's next? So many questions, guys. Oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Indocad says, are you a property owner in Canada? Yes, I am, Indocad. That's what allows me to travel, actually. I do own a house in Canada that I'm renting out, and that's basically um, what's my safety net. That's my retirement plan. That's obviously a big decision I made when I was younger and the best decision I made for sure. Any of you guys, if you're considering getting into property, real estate, no matter how the market is, I just say to do it because I've never heard of anyone regretting buying a home, no matter what decade or year or whatever. Of course, there's been some bad investment by corporations, businesses, or something like that. And if you're looking for a quick flip, maybe not, but a long-term investment, property is always the best thing. If those who plan to come to the Philippines before you go to Palawan or Shaga, go to Cebu first and explore the islands of Cebu, like uh, Sikihor, Negros, and Boho, definitely. I say, Bagyao, our from hmm, interesting place and good coffee. Uh, Jonah says, first time getting to live and nice content. I said before, the only thing is the most YouTubers are only showing this southern part of the Philippines. I think it's a very obvious reason, but I think most people show the southern side because there's an international airport in Cebu. So people just just more of us here, I think, more foreigners down here. Um, and also, when the same content keeps being found on YouTube, most people are going to keep going to those places. So probably just the international airport has a big thing to do with it. The Tarziers and Boho draws a lot of people. Same with, like, the, the, the whale sharks. So I can see why. And I think people only have usually two weeks, so they don't want to explore new places within that two weeks. They want to go places that have been, like, proven to be tourist attractions. Probably why most places or most vloggers, YouTubers, show the southern part of the Philippines. Um, levels of madness. Guessing one hum humidity, two beggars, and I have never been there. Oh, so let's talk about beggars. Guys, I am not some royalty, some snob or whatever, right? Beggars have no other choice from the look of it, right? If someone's in need of money, they're going to ask for money. And I see a lot of them here. And I wish I could help all of them, but I can't. And after a while, I start realizing maybe some parents kind of exploit the kids. So then I don't know which person is actually in need of money and which person is like just doing it to make money. It's really hard, but that doesn't bother me so much. The thing that bothers me is about the beggars. If when you decline to help them, or if you say no thanks or I have no change, you think they would just leave you alone. But sometimes they continuously go ahead and beg. But I've heard that some countries are way worse than the Philippines. In the Philippines, it's not so bad compared to some other countries that I know of and I've seen myself. RLV says, Alex, you are not the only one. Uh, you're also sweating, which is why we love our malls. Yeah, but I, it feels like I'm the only one sweating. The only person I see is motorbike drivers. They have like a cloth at the back of the head. Some construction workers cover themselves. But the, obviously they're sweating. But I'm glad I'm not the only one. But for some reason, I feel like I'm the only one affected by it to that degree where I'm like visibly hot, like, you know, visibly sweating. Um, I say, have you gone to canyoneering, Alex? I haven't been there. And for some reason, I don't care to. I don't know why. It doesn't interest me. To... It looks fun, I guess. I don't know. I haven't been there, but maybe I'll do it. Um, what's next? Kyle, thank you for your response. You work hard on your channel, and I think it deserves more subs. Thank you. You know, it's not easy. Some people think... Uh, making YouTube videos is easy. I'm not saying you guys, but some other people. But like I've been rejected so many times in today's video. That's I think that's the first time I'm like, ah, oh. it it kind of rubbed me off in a negative way. I don't know, not a negative way. I think I had like a small glimpse of like a burnout. You know, you hear these YouTubers always saying they burn out. They can't do it anymore because the content is too much. It's, it's too much time. I put more time into YouTube than a regular job, right? So if you're not finding it, enjoyable then it kind of does wear you down but i'm glad you appreciate it and I keep, i'll keep making these as long as i've been happy doing it so um kopalka store said what about asking locals what they think about the philippines what needs to improve or need to be done to see the locals perspective 
Great advice. I'll definitely make a video about that. Thank you. That's a good idea. I'm going to ask Filipinos what they like about the Philippines and what could be improved. Good idea. I did that in um, Malapasqua where Shaina was the girl that was with um, Mike, I want to say his name was. Anyways, with the Irish guy. And she told us that it was a trash situation, which improved. Uh, what's next? <clears throat> I heard other YouTubers don't like they couldn't get quality beef for a reasonable price. Poverty, trash, and public place, lack of infrastructure, uh, these bother you. Hmm. Good quality beef, lack of infrastructure, and <laughs> I lost the question. Sorry, guys. Give me a second. Whoa. Okay, let's go back. What about asking locals? We did that. Uh, poverty will be in your face here in the Philippines. Yes, it will. Alex, if only someone could also say on the north like Baguio or whatever or showcase the people and the women there, it's too bad for us sometimes being tagged as Filipinas by just one region. Good point. I'll try to get to Baguio if I can. I heard other YouTubers don't like they couldn't get quality beef, reasonable price, power, reasonable price. Poverty, trash, and public places, lack of... So the, the trash thing kind of bothers me. I'll be honest. Like, I get that people have bigger problems maybe in their life. So let's step back a bit. For people that are coming from the Western society, usually trash is not an issue for us because we have a system in place. We have other things to do. I think in the Philippines and other poor nations, I don't want to name countries, but people have like everyday life to worry about, right? making a living, earning money, putting food on a table. And I think trash becomes like a secondary concern, right? Not that they should, like they just think it's not as important right now. I have bigger things to worry about than try to recycle my can of the Coke or whatever, right? So it bothers me a little bit, but I kind of also understand it, although I don't agree with it, if that makes any sense. Um, but beef, yeah, the, the beef quality here. Actually, there's a Korean restaurant here. It's kind of pricey, but the beef was pretty good, actually. That's the only place I went to that I liked the beef. But I think it's just the region is hard to, like, raise cattle and all that stuff. So uh, Kyle says, I heard another da, da, da. YouTube flavor. You can get a neck cooler to beat the heat. <laughs> I might have to start dressing like a Filipina. A Filipino, I should say. Indocat, thank you again for that donation, bro. I appreciate that. Uh, Joe Mama. Uh, pa, pa, pa. It's not VN. I've... I fostered a kid before, gave her what she needs, but I think some kids, I think begging is cool. She had a group of kids who sleep in the streets and beg because it's fun for them. <laughs> Weird. Weird, maybe, but that's bad parenting as well, right? So let's be honest. If my kid was out there, I'd be kind of upset. Uh, TD Productions, what bothers you the most is that Burger King doesn't taste the same. <laughs> so, yeah, you're not going to find a similar taste here. I think they have to they have their own suppliers for some of these things. And different countries have different flavor, different palate, different... Like in Thailand, let me just give you an example. Like as a whole, they like spicy food. So the chicken tends to be spicier to match the population's demand, right? In some countries like the Philippines, I find the sodas to be a little bit sweeter, the Coke, the Pepsi. So I think it's just what the people like, and they kind of like cater that taste to that region. And I think, of course, being in the Philippines, you might have things that are maybe a little bit more sweet, a little bit more vinegary so on and so forth. Um, there are electric neck coolers like personal air conditioning. I mean, I don't want to get to that point where I'm walking around with a device because, you know, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm like bothered, but I don't think I'm like electric cooler around my neck bothered to do anything about it. Kyle says, thanks for your response. You think people in Thailand or Philippines are more friendly, acceptable, and welcoming for foreigners? Hmm, good question. I'm going to tell you guys my honest thought about the Philippines and Thailand when it comes to accepting foreigners. I think both countries are exactly the same, but I think you feel it more in the Philippines, but only because English is so widely spoken. So they actually like voice their welcome to you a lot more. They say hello, they wave, they welcome you, and they maybe like make you feel special in the Philippines more than Thailand. However, I think that that has 100% to do with the fact that they can speak English. I think because they can speak English generally, they're a lot more friendly because they can express themselves better. In Thailand, I find a lot of people 
regardless of their English skills, they think they can't speak English that well, so they might be a little bit shy or not so approachable. I think that's the only reason why you might feel like the Filipinos are more welcome with Thai people. Um, Hugh says, just sent you an email, Alex. Check it out. Links to the hotel and hope you can make it. Thank you, Hugh. I just heard the sound, so I guess that's your email. I'll definitely check it out after this live stream. YouTube flavor. Yeah, Mexican Coke is super sweet, but good. I want to go to Mexico one day. I'll try it out. Is that it, guys? I think we're pretty much done with all the questions. My back is killing me. I've been leaning over. Uh, the shirt is a little bit tight, and apparently I look Indian, so that's something I learned today. <laughs> What's next? Uh, ba -ba -ba. Okay, that's it, guys. So Kyle says, thanks. Based on your experience now, which country you consider stay for long term? I think I would consider staying in the Philippines for long term only because it's easier to get my visa extended here. But aside from that reason, um, I'm trying to think long term. If I was older, ah, it's really hard. Like I've always said, like both countries have good things, but in different, like Philippines, English, and visa extensions, Thailand for me, at least the food and uh, infrastructure and things like that systems a lot smoother so i mean depends on what your lifestyle is maybe and the nightlife in thailand is like obviously first in the world so if you're a partier a drinker a drinker <laughs> partier if you like to party you go out a lot maybe thailand they have like world renowned places for that um josie says where are you originally from <laughs> you can always tell who's new to the channel. So, Josie, we have this like fun competition or fun challenge on the channel. If my Living Abroad channel reaches 20,000 subscribers, uh, although I'm Canadian, people want to know my ethnicity. So if we hit that mark, I'm going to go ahead and reveal that at that point. Um, TND Productions, you'll be able to spot a Korean a mile away because of the electric coolers they use. <laughs> cool. Endocast says, how do you get marriage license in the Philippines? I don't know, bro. I'm not trying to get married, so I will have no idea how to get a marriage license. I assume you just go to the somewhere. <laughs> I have no idea. If someone can help Endocad get his marriage license, that will be great. My throat is drying, and I'm kind of falling asleep reading these comments. My eyes are getting blurry. It's been an hour and a half of me or an hour and 45 minutes of me talking straight. If you guys found this live interaction fun, subscribe to the channel, watch tomorrow's video, or write me, email me, comments. We're a small community, but I love you guys. And that's it for today. Someone laughed at his marriage. <laughs> um, how do you renew your visa in the Philippines? Indocad, I have a video on my channel. You simply go to the immigration office. It's like a half a page. You simply write some information. You get it within an hour. It's super easy to renew your a visa in the Philippines. If you're in Cebu, you can go to JY Center or go to Lapu Lapu, um, Mac 10 Island. It's called... Um, Gaisano Mall, the immigration office, it takes an hour. You simply write your information. You don't need anything. You pay 3,000 pesos, which is about, what, 60 bucks, and you can go ahead and extend it for an additional month, so on and so forth, up to three years before you have to leave the country and come back, and it renews again for three years, so you're good to go. Um, keep up the good work. Thanks for the live chat. Assalamu alaikum, Arab. I'm not Arab, but assalamu alaikum to you. Um, I'm... I'm not, no, I saw you with Mergam, with the Indian. Uh, I forgot his name. With the Indian? The guy was Korean. Am I the Indian? <laughs> no, I saw, yeah, I, I was at Mergam. Uh, he's in Cebu right now, actually. Reginald, dollar, thank you. Get some coffee, bro. I appreciate it. Thank you for that. I definitely get some coffee. Arab, not Arab. Arbob, Airbnb. The hell's Arbob? <laughs> well, I thought I think he said Arab. Sorry, bro. Uh, anyways, this is what I mean. I gotta get some uh, some coffee for sure. Thank you, Reginald. I'm gonna use that for a coffee. Get me some some cafe. Arbob means boss in Arabic, though. <laughs> that makes more sense. So I guess it does prove I'm not Arab. I'm think I'm reading all kinds of stuff. Um, good evening. Oh no, Pop Kintos, you're late, bro. Are you Italian? Hey, uh, mi amore. I can't speak. A signora. Suanza was good easy. Was good was good easy. See? No, I'm not Italian. I don't know what I'm saying. I just heard that somewhere. I'm using it now. 
I'm not Italian, or am I? I don't know. 20K, I'll tell you guys. I don't want to say bye ever to you guys, whether it's on my regular videos or my live chats. My back is hurting. My head is hurting. Um, I got to get out of here. I'm going to, like, hallucinate. It's weird, right? What's next? You're not Arab, but you are Middle Eastern, right? Yes, sir. Reginald, peace. Are you French? Je ne parle français. I don't speak French, so I'm not French. Or am I? I don't know. I'll see you guys next time. This is getting out of hand. Yeah, I think uh, you're a Filipino. I am a Filipino. See you guys next time. Tomorrow's video, guys. Check it out. Road to 20K. Yes, thank you, guys. Great job. Appreciate it. Bye.